Welcome to this ninth episode of a series pertaining to the rich history of the freedmen from Oklahoma, once known as Indian Territory. This episode is called In Search of a Slave Called Jake. This story actually began when the name of Jake appeared. But in search of the slave called Jake, there came a soldier called Jacob. Some time ago, I was curious about this one man who had been enslaved in the Choctaw Nation. His name was said to have been Jake Hall. Now, not much was known about this man except that he was enslaved on the Hall Plantation in the old Scullyville District. That's in the northern part of the Choctaw Nation. Jake died during the Civil War. His wife was left with three children. And basically, that's all that's known about him. One of his sons, however, later became a local law enforcement officer, a local deputy sheriff many, many years later. The story of his son, Squire Hall, was recorded in the Indian Pioneer Papers, an oral history project that became a part of the Western History Collections of the University of Oklahoma. In that interview with the son, Squire Hall, who lived not far from Spyro, what is now Spyro, Oklahoma, he told the story of his own life growing up in the Choctaw Nation, and he mentioned the name of his father, Jake Hall. All we know is that Jake Hall died during the Civil War and that they all lived in Scullyville in the Choctaw Nation. And that his parents, as well as he himself, Squire, the young boy, they were enslaved on the Hall Plantation. This is a smaller story, though. Apparently, between 1860 and 61, there was supposedly an insurrection that occurred on the plantation. A slave rebellion took place. Several members of the Hall family, the slaveholders' family, in fact, had been killed in this insurrection. Jake Hall was a slave at that time on that estate. And it's said that as they sought to seize control of the plantation, well, they were met with resistance by members of the Hall family and also the overseer. Several of the men subsequently died, the men in the Hall family died in this altercation. It is also said that apparently through some sort of intervention by Jake, the slave, the enslaved man, he was somehow able to intervene and able to stop or assist in stopping further bloodshed. Little else is mentioned about him, except that he died during the Civil War. From that interview from the Pioneer Papers, Jake Hall talked about, of course, the fact that his father assisted the last male survivor of the family. And then they, in turn, had avenged the killing of several members and killed the treacherous overseer who had instigated the actual uprising that had occurred. So what happened? All we really know is that Jay Call assisted the last male member who was alive of the family, helping to bring the bloodshed to an end. Was he some sort of loyal slave? Was he not involved and then later came upon what had happened? And was he simply just bringing a violent situation to some sort of end? Those details will never be known. But I became curious about this man himself. Did he have the same sentiments that the men who were trying to overtake the plantation may have had, were they seeking freedom? Who was Jake? Who was this man? Or if anything could be found out about him. It is said that after the uprising had occurred and had been suppressed, suppressed, the slaves were put in the care of a man called Walker Folsom. So I decided to look and see if I could find anything on Walker Folsom. And I did notice on an 1860 slave schedule 
There was the name of Walker Folsom, who himself owned several people, had several people held in bondage. He was the one who was later made to be the guardian or the guardian of sort on paper of these enslaved people. I noticed in the same community, there was the name of Joseph R. Hall or J.S. Hall, J.R. Hall. And he held 20 people in bondage. Among those people that he held enslaved, there were two who were older men. Near the bottom, you see one male who was 40. You also see another who was 35 or so. So I wondered if any of those adult men could have been Jake Hall. Who was Jake, the man? Could anything be found out about him in any way? Well, it said that he assisted the last member of the family during the uprising. But I wondered if this Jake, one of those men, the 35 year old or the man who was said to be about 40, was the same man whose name I found in another record from 1863. That particular record was a military record. And it was the record of someone in the 79th United States Colored Troops, a man called Jacob, Company B of the 79th U.S. Colored Infantry. 40 years of age, not a tall man, five foot three inches, dark skinned man, black eyes, and black hair. And 40 years of age. Well, as one looks at that, this is 1863 when he enlisted. This is a service record from the Civil War, Union Army. If he was about 40 at the time of enlistment in the middle of 1863, then he was born in the 1820s. And if this is fairly accurate, then this man was born someplace else outside of Indian territory because Choctaws had not yet immigrated westward to Indian territory. And of course, I remember that slave schedule and wonder, could that have been that little tick mark next to the 40-year-old man? Could that have represented Jake? We'll never know because you cannot use a slave schedule and say with certainty, there's the man we're talking about. But it does make one wonder. We only know a few facts. Slave uprising took place around 60 or 61. A year later, shots were fired at, Appom at uh, not Appomattox, at Fort Sumter. The Civil War began. By 1863, black men were being recruited for the Union Army, not far from where they lived. They lived in Scullyville in the northern part of the Choctaw Nation. Directly to the east of that area, they were bordered by the town of Fort Smith, Arkansas, a town that was recruiting black soldiers, also a community that was going to be occupied by black soldiers from the 57th, 79th, the 83rd, the 11th was organized right there. And what was interesting is that in Fort Smith, the 11th U.S. Colored Infantry was organizing and recruiting soldiers. And there's a strong possibility the word spread throughout the enslaved community through that known underground network of communication. Colored troops were pouring into Indian territory as well. There had already been some disturbances in the territory. So a lot of things were happening at that time. I decided to look at the soldiers of the 11th U.S. Colored, but I did not see a Jake Hall or a Jacob Hall. But there was a soldier in the 79th U.S. Colored Infantry, and his name was Jacob Hall. Could this possibly be the same man? Could Jacob be Jake? Now, I was curious about the birthplace. In the interview with Squire Hall, 
he said that his father was from Mississippi. But would he have really known this? He was an infant when his father died, so he really didn't have a chance to hear this from his father. And on the actual service record, the soldier himself said he was born in Alabama, but yet the county that he named in Alabama, Campbell County does not exist and apparently did not exist. So the only thing we know with certainty that he was just not born in the nation. Of course, we can see the profile from the Indian Pioneer Papers where he, he mentions on question number six, the name of his father, Jake Hall, and his place of birth was Mississippi. The only thing else we know about his father was that he was an ex-slave who died during the Civil War. The only thing that we know that is really certain is that Jacob was born somewhere outside of the territory and he was enslaved at some point in his life on the Hall Plantation. But another look at the regiment. There were some more halls that served in that regiment. I wondered if the other halls who may have served in the same regiment were connected to each other. And I was quite surprised to notice that two of the other soldiers with surnames of Hall indicated that they were born right there in the Choctaw Nation and specifically in Scullyville, the same community where Squire Hall and his parents had lived. Now, two of the other soldiers even recorded and it got placed on their service records where they were from. And you can see Caesar Hall, Company B, same regiment as Jacob Hall, a young boy of a mere 16 years, born in Scullyville in the Choctaw Nation. We also see William Hall, not much older, only 18 years, born in Scullyville in the Choctaw Nation. I also noted that Caesar and William were young enough to have possibly been sons or younger brothers, perhaps, of the elder Jacob. But of course, that will not be known. But all three of these men were men of Scullyville. These sons of Scullyville, it's important to look at where they were. Scullyville, as you can see in the portion that's blue on the map, it's in the northern part, northernmost part of the Choctaw Nation. And that southern border goes all the way to the Rio Grande, to, to the Texas border. But this is the northern part of the nation. And one can see that they're also close. If you look at the yellow portion, that's the Cherokee Nation. And the land to the right was the state of Arkansas. And obviously, Caesar and William were from that community. And as we learned from the Indian pioneer interview with his son, Squire, they all lived in Scullyville, which is very interesting. And of course, this is where the Old Hall Plantation was once located. Jake Hall's military record indicated that he enlisted in the first Kansas colored, which was later designated as the 79th U.S. Colored Infantry. When that infantry was in the Cherokee Nation was when he had enlisted. And you can see the Cherokee Nation was close by. The only remaining fact we know about Jake Hall is that he died before the war was over. His wife Eliza was left with three children. Now, for this to be the same man, it's important to determine whether this Jacob Hall, the soldier, survived the Civil War or did he die before the war ended? 
That information to, was actually found in his service record. The soldier, Jacob Hall, who was in the 79th United States Colored Infantry, died before the unit was ever mustered out of service. The cause of death was typhoid, and the soldier died in January of 1864. So we know now Squire Hall's father died before the war ended. In this particular case, Jacob Hall died before the war ended. There was the question whether or not these three soldiers were connected. We may never know the answer to that, but it's very, very clear that they all responded within a short period of time when the recruitment posters started appearing throughout the South. Those men did hear that call. Jake and Caesar enlisted in Fort Smith. They didn't join the 11th, they joined the Kansas Color Guard by that time, the 79th. And the other young man had, enjoy, had joined in the Cherokee Nation. But they had to know each other because they were in the very same company and every company consisted of a hundred men. So there were definitely strong possibilities. The two younger men, Caesar and William, were both born in Scullyville. They were just two ages apart, two years apart in age. And probably they came off of the Hall Plantation. And of course, there is the possibility that they may have been related. A possibility that both William and Caesar may have been siblings. And the fact that they were so much younger than the elder Jacob, they could have been younger brothers, cousins, sons. We'll never know, but we know that they did know each other. We also know that Jake Hall died in 1864. The only conclusion to some of these questions is that more than likely, Jake Hall the slave was Jacob Hall the soldier. And he went from slave to soldier. And it's very important when we see the fact that someone was in one status and then something happened and they had a dramatic change. The trajectory of their life changed. Well, it's important to understand this man went through a tremendous transformation. He had to have a dramatic change in his life from being enslaved, stopping violence during an insurrection. And then he had to go through a transformation a transformation that we've seen depicted in several Civil War images that were taken during the war. We have no image of Jacob, but we do have some images of people who did make that transition. We know that there was Hubbard, Hubbard Pryor who served in the U.S. Colored Infantry. When he arrived, I believe he was in the 46th, when he arrived at the camp, as a contraband, he was tattered and torn, but he was transitioned and he made it successfully as a soldier. And there's the one image of a young boy, some people call him Jackson in the 78th, some people call him Johnson in the 79th, the same regiment of Jacob Hall, the young boy who arrives again in the clothing that many slaves had to wear, tattered, torn, without shoes. He became a drummer boy in a regiment of the U.S. Colored Troops, and he made that transition. Certainly any person once enslaved certainly had to make that transition. Jacob Hall had to make that transition as well. So there are so many untold stories about what had to transpire for that to happen. And of course, we know that the men 
who all serve the, the hall men, who serve the same company of the same regiment, came from the same place in Scullyville, in the Choctaw Nation. Yes, there were strong possibilities that they had a strong and close connection. Jacob the soldier, his service was short. He enlisted in May of 1863. By the early part of the following year, he would pass away. But he did live to fight for freedom. He participated in the Battle of Cabin Creek in July of that year that occurred in the Cherokee Nation. And as you know, the Cherokee Nation was directly north of Southern Although his service was not long, he did live to breathe free air. He fought for his own freedom and for that of others as well. And the other two soldiers, Caesar and William Hall, they remained in that unit after the elder Jacob died. But they would continue to fight at Honey Springs and Fort Gibson. They were all freedom fighters and they lived to be mustered out at the end of the Civil War and to breathe at last free air as free men. So some basic questions were answered about Jacob Hall. A man who supposedly assisted in an insurrection. When the time came where he could seize his own freedom, he did so. And he enlisted to fight for his freedom and for the freedom of others. So he did get a little bit of an opportunity to taste freedom. And he was able to transform himself and seize dignity as a freedom fighter, something that he could not have done while enslaved in the Choctaw Nation. As so a reflect upon this story, he lived a short life, but he won his battle for freedom, even though he lost his battle for life. Because although disease had taken him, he died with dignity and he died for a cause. The effort to look for Jake Hall began simply as an effort to find a man who was part of a slave rebellion, but it ended with knowing that this man who was found was a freedom fighter. He would see action in the territory and he would serve alongside other men who were also seeking freedom. And he and his compatriots, the young Caesar at the age of 16, the young William at the age of 18, they were all sons of Scullyville. This father of Squire Hall, he made a name for himself, but not as a loyal slave, because he had within himself this fire of wanting to be free. He had it inside of his chest and it was on his mind. And he did earn it. Hopefully these few documents will really reflect the spirit of all of these three men. From their life of enslavement to their fight for freedom. We can now call their names. Caesar Hall. William Hall and Jacob Hall. They were the freedom fighters of Scullyville. This was a man who had history in a family and his family was deeply planted on the soil of Scullyville. His son who, who rose to become a law enforcement officer in the small community around the Braden Bottoms where he lived. But he also came from a man of honor who fought briefly for the right to live as a free man, whether it was going to be in the Choctaw Nation 
of wherever his spirit would take him and them. It was well earned. Thank you for listening to this brief story of my search for Jacob Hall and his story. If you're interested in other stories of freedmen from Indian Territory, you're welcome to consider purchasing Freedmen of the Frontier Volumes 1 and 2, now available on Amazon. And if you are interested in connecting with others who are involved with researching the freedmen and telling their stories, consider joining the Oklahoma Freedmen Collective, a group that seeks to educate those who descend from this amazing history to empower descendants to use technology that's out there to tell their stories and to create and to facilitate avenues of communication among freedmen, freedmen communities, freedmen organizations. We hope that you join us. For more information, go to okfreedmen.org. Thank you for watching this particular story on Freedmen of the Frontier.